What's up, guys and girls? Told you I'd be back. So, uh, in the last video, I told you that I had to, that I was putting a cam and lifters in my wife's Challenger. Uh, so I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll film it. So we got uh, cylinder three is down. It's got a misfire. Um, got a bad lifter, unfortunately. So instead of just going in and replacing the lifters, uh, I want to get rid of the AFM, active fuel management, which where it switches from four cylinder to a V8. Uh, so I want to get rid of that. So that calls for replacing the entire cam as well. The cams are different on a non-AFM engine. I'm, I'm filming right now, Noah. My son, Noah, you say hi, Noah? Say, say hi. He's out here with me, asking me a hundred questions. He's gonna help me work on mom's car. So anyway, uh, we are, we're gonna tear it down and replace the lifters and the cam and put it back together. This is my first Hemi that I've tore down and this far and worked on. Uh, so maybe, maybe maybe it'll run when I get done. I don't know. Probably not. Probably not. My wife will divorce me probably after this, but all right, so I've got intake off of it i have the rockers and uh push rods off of it on both sides <clears throat> i've got the exhaust unhooked because what i want to do is i'm just going to leave the manifold obviously you see there's no room in there to get to it uh on this side there's a little bit more room but uh the best thing to do i think is to hey you can simmer down over can you simmer down? Thank you. Thank you. I know you're excited. I'm excited too. But these people watching need to hear me. And all they're going to hear is you screaming in the background. Okay? Okay. Okay. Don't, don't poke your eye out with that. Okay. okay. All right. So uh, I'm just going to leave the, the manifolds on, the exhaust manifolds on both sides. I'm going to leave them on. And I... Uh, what, what are you doing? Huh? Uh, you got a screwdriver, dude. I know. I got, you just, you take apart whatever you need to take apart over there, and I'll do this side. How about that? Okay. The, you do that side, I'll do this side. Okay. Okay. All right. So, I've got the exhaust. I've got you. Right, do you want to talk? I, I can just give you the camera. Do you want to do it? You do. So you think you can explain exactly what we're doing? Mm -hmm. you, are you sure? That would be a 10 millimeter socket and ratchet. So please do not lose that 10 millimeter because I've lost 46 of them in the past two months and still yet to be able to find them. So I've got the exhaust unhooked underneath uh, and I'm just gonna pull the heads off with the manifolds on and take them off that way obviously if you got to take the cam out the whole all this has to come off all the front end uh, of the engine's got to come off and then i'm almost certain that i'm gonna have to take the fans possibly the radiator and all that to get the cam out the next thing we'll do is I gotta let the antifreeze out. I hadn't done that yet. So uh, I'm gonna to raise it up, let the antifreeze out, because as soon as I take these heads off, antifreeze is gonna go in everywhere. So that's what I'll do. I'll raise it up, take the antifreeze, let the antifreeze out of it, and then we'll try to get these heads off. Okay, so I was, I'm trying to drain the antifreeze out of the radiator 
and there is a drain cog in there, but nothing's coming out. Uh, I don't know. I turned it. Maybe I'm not doing it right. That's possible. Probably. Uh, seems simple enough, though. You just turn it and it should drain, right? That, that makes sense. Check it out. So there's the drain cock up in there. Uh, I turned it and nothing came out. So it does have coolant in it. So I don't know what the deal is. I don't know if I have to pull it out or push it in. I'll try, but uh, probably what I'll do if nothing comes out, I just don't want to break it and do something to cause it to break. So and it does look like it has been leaking. It is slightly wet right there. Um, so what I'll do is just, I'm going to take the shield off and then take the bottom radiator hose off right here, going into the radiator. Uh, I'll take that hose off and drain it that way. You know, this, of course, anybody that's ever taken a hose off, it doesn't matter where you put the pan, you could put a 10 foot pan up underneath your car and the coolant's going to miss it totally and make a huge mess. I just hate doing that, but, uh, looks like my only choice. So that's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that shield off and then take that hose off and hopefully try not to make a huge mess. And as predicted with a five gallon bucket and an oil pan, or a oil drain pan under the car, still manage to make a mess. How's that, how's that even happen? So, yeah, five gallon bucket directly up underneath the radiator hose, the bottom radiator hose, and an oil pan, oil drain pan right beside it, and yet it goes everywhere else but them two places. Okay, so now that that's made a mess. Uh, I guess we'll get the heads off now. That's the only thing I have left up there. Just take the head bolts out and the heads should come off. Theoretically speaking. We'll see. Okay. So now I'm going to take the all these head bolts off are out and the head should come off. start working out a little bit. I'll move this light out of the way. I feel like it's all in the way, but whatever. Okay. Yeah, definitely, definitely you should start working out. Oh, boy, I no, 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 not gonna do that.
Well, I forgot. There's a oxygen sensor that I forgot to unplug. It goes into the manifold right here. Okay, so got the driver's side head off and remove the lifters. And just as suspected, lifter down. Like I was saying, we got the cylinder head off and I've got the lifters so this one right here one is not like the others so I don't know if you can see that or not but it won't even turn like it's froze and as you can see she is ate up pretty bad uh course for y'all that do not know so this is a working still working 
uh, lifter, and that's supposed to roll up against the cam. And you see how smooth it is as well. Um, that's that's what it's supposed to look like and work like. And this, yeah. Yeah, froze, will not move. I don't know if the cam's damaged or not. It's a good possibility, but. Okay, so we got heads off both sides, uh, lifters out. Of course, lifters looked okay on this side. Uh, the only issue we had was on cylinder three, which is on the other side. So, anyways, uh, got uh, got everything off there. Now I have to tear down the front. This oh, all of this, so I can get the cam out of it, and I got to take these these solenoids out. There's four of them. Um, those are for your, the AFM. Uh, so we're going to delete them. Uh, and the kit we ordered was, I ordered it from Texas Speed. They, they have all the gaskets, the cam, lifters, have a whole kit you can buy to uh, do it. So I just got everything from them. Uh, so... Anyway, they come with the the plugs. That's what I was going to show you. Um, they come with these little plugs that, that go in the place of them solenoids. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do next. Uh, may take them out and put them plugs in and then take all that off which i'm not looking forward to but whatever all right so we got the time cover off i uh, got the cam out and this is this is our culprit and it did a number on the cam see that very well but one of these are is not like the other all right so we're gonna go back with cam and our handy dandy assembly lube just uh we're gonna, we're gonna lube it up real good So, let's just slide this in now. And we'll slide this down and put it in now. You can put it in the clock. What the the? What are you? What are you doing? What are you doing, Dad? What are you doing? Are you doing? a bolt at the end to kind of help give you some leverage. I can't get it. I can't get it. Got to put some lube on this end.
Watch the jack handle. There's going to be some bolts flying out of it. Yeah. All right. Try this again. Piece of my glove almost got in there. Pinched it. What are you doing? Are you working on something? All right, so we got the cam in. Uh, got the cam gear chains back on. Got it all in time. Of course, our number one cylinders on the top dead center. Uh, and then our mark right here is straight up and down, which it kind of, it is. Just, just trust me. Uh, got our tensioner back on. So I guess we're going to go back with the timing cover, get it put back on, and then go from there. And by the way, um, if you all, if anybody decides to do one of these, um, you do need to put some RTV sealant, uh, sealant right there. And then over here on the other side, that's just where the, where the cover goes on. And uh, makes the oil pan in the front of the block. But it's always good to put a, a bead of silicone right there on each side just so you can seal that crease. All right, so the timer cover is on and secure. Um, we'll put our lifters in next. And yeah. I don't know if you see this or not, but I got see it's flat right there. Um, these are the holders. Just put them in there. That's what holds the lifters from in place and keeps them from spinning. And then let me just go in. So, like so. I failed miserably. Yeah, this is 
like so. And then it's got a bolt that goes in the middle here. And I found my socket. <coughs> Fifteen minutes later. Alright. Okay, that's how it's done. Okay, so we got the lifters in. Um, I got the uh, engine block where the heads hit. I got them cleaned. I've got the actual cylinder heads themselves cleaned. And I've got the gaskets, the head gaskets on now. Now, these gaskets do go a certain way. Um, the ones I got from Texas Speed, they wasn't actually labeled on the gasket themselves, but the tag on them uh, said right and left. You know, obviously, you take the right one and flip it the right way that all the holes and stuff are lined up. Um, so, yeah, uh, now we're ready to set the heads on. I've got them over there cleaned ready to go so let's put them heavy things on ah. hey. like that. 
there. So we're gonna get some head bolts in these. Whew. Things are heavy. <laughs> you have no power here. We're gonna get some head bolts put in it and get them tightened down. So Texas Speed offered these for the head bolt kits. Uh, with the whole kit, obviously. So I'm going back with brand new head bolts. Now, I think you don't have to replace the head bolts on these. Um, but, don't hold me to that. But we are. We're, uh, we're putting new ones in. It came with a kit, so let's get it. I like to hand start all my bolts, man. I just uh, make sure that they're not cross threaded. sides in. I'm going to go do the other side and then we'll get them torqued down. Alright, so I got the heads uh, torqued down. Now we're putting in the rocker arms with push rods. Uh, I'm going to get them torqued down. Um, I just went ahead. I didn't film the torquing part of it. The battery was almost dead. So, anyway. Uh, now we're gonna get the rockers in. I've already got them on there. All right, so one one major thing when doing this, and I've seen where a lot of people, or a few people, have had problems, like the push rods um, go in your, in your rockers right here. When you're putting these on, make sure that these are in the little cups for the rocker arms because sometimes that they can they can seem like they're in there but and and can slip out while you're putting the whole this whole piece on um so just make sure that the, the push rods are in the rocker arms really good um i've seen people put them together and then have misfires after and have to take it back apart and we're gonna find out one of the push rods wasn't seated in the rocker arms like it should and had to do it all over just take a little extra time and make sure it's in there um so anyway i got them all in and we're gonna torque it down i think they torque to 16 foot pounds uh, there's no particular sequence So those are those are done. Also, another thing, um, 
they they are different. Uh, your intake and exhaust um, rockers, of course, I don't know if you can see that or not, but they have an eye on them for the uh, for the intake side. So it's just one way you can tell what goes where. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and get the exhaust side done, do the other side, and get that buttoned up, and then we'll be back. All right, so we got all the rockers put on, got them torqued down. Um, we went through and we turned the engine over um, by hand and just kind of watched everything move up and down on both sides and everything seems to be okay. Uh, just the, and the main reason why we did that is just to make sure these uh, push rods were in the rockers right. Um, none of them were like halfway or, or we missed any of them, so. Uh, so that's done. Um, I guess now we're just gonna go over here. I'm gonna get the uh, valve cover gaskets put in. So, uh, a little tip here. When you're putting a valve cover in, a valve cover gasket in, it's always good to put in, like get it set out the way it's supposed to go on the valve cover, but put the curved pieces in first, not the straight pieces. And then, because what'll happen if you start one in and work your way down, you'll have a big section of it that, that won't line up. So what I always do is just put the curved pieces in each place. And then the rest of the valve cover gasket usually, the rest of the gasket usually goes in like it's supposed to. All right, and then the rest of them, since you got all the curved pieces, you just go back and push the rest of the gasket down, and it'll go, it'll sit in where it needs to sit in. Yeah, you don't have to worry about a bunch of extra left over. I really need to get some more light in here. I think I'm gonna put some lights on the walls. You know, I'm getting on up there in age and my eyesight just ain't what it used to be, you know? <laughs> I mean, old age catching up with me, man. All right. So, go back through and double check, and then make sure everything pushed down like it should. And there it is. So, we got also the tube seals, which are right here. Of course, these are to keep the engine oil from getting down in your spark plug tubes. Same thing here, just push them in and
All right, all right, all right. All right, so our gaskets are in on the one valve cover. We'll go ahead and get the other ones put in uh, on the other valve cover, <clears throat> and then we'll get them bolted on. Okay, so we got the valve covers on, we got the coil packs on, um, everything bolted down, torque like it should be. Uh, since I'm doing AFM delete, I'm getting rid of my AFM solenoids, which are right here. Um, of course, these two are the plugs. I've already done two of them, but there's the other two. So there's four total. Um, obviously, we don't need them anymore. So uh, the kit came with the plugs that you put in there. Um, so you just remove the, the solenoids and then put the plugs in. Now, um, I will say when you're doing these solenoids, they're very hard to get out. Like uh, when you go to pry on them, uh, most of the time the top comes off and leaves the bottom portion in there. Uh, so there's a trick to getting that out and I'm gonna show you how to do that right quick. Uh, so obviously I've, I've already got the bolts out and got them unplugged. Um, so what you do is just take you something to pry on the solenoid with. Um, let me get in here. We'll do this one back here. Uh, and obviously what you'll do is just try to pry up on it. And what's going to happen is the top's going to come off and break. Just like that. They don't ever come out. Um, I hadn't figured out a way anyway. So anyway, it leaves the bottom piece in there. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. Um, so there's a trick to getting those out. What I do is I just take a screw, like a wood screw, and then just in the center portion of it somewhere, just take it and drill it, screw it in there. Well, we'll see that one's already spinning, so I might be able to get a hold of it that way. So I'll put a screw in there and I take a claw hammer and just, once you put a screw in there, you pull up on it. And normally they just pop right out. And so, just like that, they pop out, and then I got my plug right here. So, these are the plugs that came with the uh, Texas Speed Kit that I got. Um, as you see, there's just a couple of O-rings, and they just go down in the hose, take the place of the solenoids, and block blocks them off. Of course, you put your boat back in. Um, but yeah, it's pretty easy. Uh, so we'll, we'll go ahead and finish that and uh, be right back. All right, so we got the intake on, uh, intake two, got uh, everything on the front end, the tensioner, the power steering pump, compressor, all that. So we were saying everything's on and Got the radiator on, the fan on. All we have to do now is just put some coolant in it, change the oil and filter, of course, and then I've got to program it uh, or delete the AFM out of it. A friend of mine has HP tuners. He's gonna come by once I get it um, running and uh, He's gonna delete the AFM for me in the computer. And then we should be able to go. Theoretically speaking, hopefully. Maybe. Oh, I really hope it works. I really hope it works. Well, uh, got it done. It's all back together. I guess that's gonna do it for this video. I just, uh, sorry I didn't take a lot of time and go into detail. 
I was trying to get it done. It's my wife's car. So if you have any questions, um, just comment below uh, and I'll be sure to answer them. If you have any questions about doing this or what I did personally um, while doing this job, you can you can ask and um, I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. If you could do me a favor, go down and hit that like button, the subscribe button. It would really help me out, help the channel out. And again, if you have any more questions about what I did uh, here, just feel free to comment below and uh, I'll let you know uh, whatever you need to know. Thanks very much. See you.